Crack is whack. Say that again. How's it going, everybody? And welcome to another installment of Geeking Poetic News. I'm your host, Larry Roberts. I am Megan Guest. I'm Vito Marchese. And this is some more goddamn good delicious news for y'all. Mm-mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, been a lot of good news coming out in the last week. A lot of stuff we're uh, pretty excited to talk about here. Yeah, real excited. Yeah. Before we get into that, we would just like to say thank you to everybody who's been so supportive of us. Uh, we had a lot of good responses to the first episode of the news, and uh, we're happy to bring some more for you. And we even have a new Patreon supporter. You'll see her name on the screen behind us. Thank you, Denise, for your support. Yeah, thank you so much to everybody for all your support. And uh, keep it coming, because we need help. <laughs> we need your support. <laughs> Uh, we appreciate it. We need your input too. So don't forget to leave comments below at the end of this. Uh, let us know what you think about stuff. And uh, with that, yeah, let's delve into the news because right. there's, there's a lot to talk right. about. Yeah, let's do this. Uh, getting into uh, one of the things that I'm the most excited about, it has been revealed that a long, uh, long gone toy company that we thought would never see the light of day again has now risen from the ashes. So recently, some very exciting news came to light for us toy collectors out there when it was revealed that Marty Abrams, the owner and founder of the Mego Toys Corporation, was resurrecting his toy company for the modern market today. Abrams and his toy company Mego Corporation made a name for themselves in the 1970s and the early 1980s by selling some of the most sought after and played with action figures, play sets, and board games such as Ball Buster. Look it up, folks. It's worth your time. And the Mego Toy Company rode pretty high throughout the 70s until the advent of Star Wars, famously picked up by Kenner Toys, who then knocked Mego down a few notches and they weren't selling so well anymore by the start of the 1980s. Most famously leading to a court case where Abrams and Mego ultimately ended up closing their doors by 1983. In the decades that have passed since then, many of their toys, such as their infamous World's Greatest Superheroes, Planet of the Apes, and Star Trek action figure lines, have become highly sought after collectibles by people of all ages all over the world, even garnering such a hardcore following with adult collectors that there are now forums such as the Mego Museum or conventions like Mego Meet where adults get together and trade, discuss, and buy these classic toys from the 1970s. Most of us thought that those days were all behind us. We would never see a Mego toy on the shelves again. That is until just recently when Marty Abrams announced to the public that he was resurrecting Mego Corporation with the help of Target stores who will be carrying the Mego toys exclusively through their retail chain. Abrams has also enlisted the help of well-respected and world-renowned customizer and owner of MC Toys, Paul, otherwise known as Dr. Mego Claire. Doc Mego and Abrams first made the public announcement about this when they appeared together at the 2018 Mego Meet convention in Columbus, Ohio, just this past June. Abrams and Doc Mego also appeared again later at the 2018 installment of the San Diego Comic Con. They surprised the crowd by showing up alongside legendary quarterback Joe Namath and displaying their San Diego Comic Con exclusive Joe Namath action figure as well as unveiling the rest of the figures that can be expected in the first wave. Some of the characters that are revealed to be released in this first wave are 14-inch versions of superheroes like Batman, Wonder Woman, General Zod, and Harley Quinn. There are also several Star Trek figures coming out, like an awesome two-pack of Kirk and Spock in their Mirror Mirror costumes, as well as individual figures of Chekhov and Sulu, who were never created for the original series back in the 1970s. There are also miscellaneous other characters from various TV shows, such as Piper from Charmed, Kelly from Charlie's Angels, The Fonz, Tootie from Facts of Life. That's a bit of a head scratcher. Mm. Peg Bundy from Married with Children, Norm from Cheers, Alice from The Brady Bunch, and one of my personal favorites, Bella Lugosi's version of Dracula. While many collectors are excited about Mego returning to the store shelves, there's already been quite a bit of scrutiny and criticism from some of the harsher critics in the Mego collecting community over some of the sculpts or some of the character selection. 
But if early sales are any indication of where this line is going to go, Migo seems to be doing very well as there's already reports of them selling out very briskly in Target stores all across the country. In fact, many collectors have been getting very frustrated because many stores have either not been stocking shelves quickly enough or not getting them in at all. Migo Corporation has assured fans that their concerns about distribution and some of the design flaws will be taken care of in the near future. Meanwhile, the toys seem to be flying off the shelves when they're hitting the shelves, and uh, everybody seems to be pretty excited about what the future holds for Mego Corporation and what they're going to come up with in Wave 2. So yeah, for guys like me, you know, grown men who like to collect and play with dolls, which he does. Yeah, I do. Uh, this is all pretty exciting. And uh, yeah, there's a, I, I'm especially excited about the Star Trek figures. Those are oh, the ones. Yeah. Uh, Those sound real cool. Yeah. Yeah. There's some, there's some uh, really cool stuff coming out from them. And I, I have a feeling they're going to come out with a lot more. There's so many characters that they never got to do back in the old days that, you know, I'm pretty excited. If they make a, an Orion slave girl, I'm all in. Oh, yes. All in. We Ooh, already know that's your shit. Girls, I mean. <laughs> Yeah, you, you can like some green. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I do. <laughs> so, yeah, keep it up, Marty and Doc. Good on you. I can't wait to see what you got coming out next. All right, and with that, Megan, I understand you've got some good news for us. Yeah, we got some big news coming out of the Star Trek franchise this week, with CBS and Alex Kurtzman being at the center of it all. Mm. CBS signed a new agreement with Alex Kurtzman who recently took over the helm of Star Trek Discovery after Aaron Herberts and Gretchen Berg were fired because, according to sources, it sucked. The new agreement sees Kurtzman staying on many projects, but the most talked about is the fact that there are new Star Trek series in the works in addition to Star Trek Discovery. The new pack keeps Kurtzman on for five years to the tune of about five million per year. With so many differing interpretations in Star Trek's history, Time will tell what Kurtzman's approach to the franchise will be. Some of the first leaked information on Kurtzman's new reign is that there will not only be one, not two, not even three, but four new Star Trek series in the works. The first is gossip of a new animated series. Will this be a new series or building off an animated series of the past? The second is about Starfleet Academy. With Stephanie Savage and Josh Schwartz of Gossip Girl and Marvel's Runaways, there will no doubt be plenty of teenage angst to go around. Third is said to be a limited series revolving around Khan, originally played by Ricardo Montalban. Will this series be about how his people became superhumans, how they survived the planet Kirk left them on, or be more focused on his genetically enhanced ancestors last seen in Enterprise? The fourth has been tightly under wraps, could this possibly be involving Sir Patrick Stewart? Regardless of how they decide to proceed with the series, Animation for the Kids, Starfleet Academy for the Eleven Teens, Con for the Baby Boomers, and Sir Patrick Stewart for Baby Boomer Kids, Grandkids, and me. Speaking of Sir Patrick Stewart, he made a surprise appearance at the Las Vegas Star Trek convention where he made the stunning announcement that Jean-Luc Picard is back. He claimed he went back and forth on doing a new Star Trek, but it was the fans that ultimately helped him decide to go all in. He said that while no scripts have been written as of yet, he can tell us that the new show takes place 20 years after Star Trek Nemesis, and that Picard may or may not be a captain any longer. He may be a different Picard than what we grew to love due to all his experiences over the years. Could this be a hint that his show will also be animated and that's how he's different? Could he possibly be gallivanting the universe with his buddy Q? Could he just be telling us stories of the past 20 years and we'll get glimpses of other Star Trek Next Generation characters? Will this maybe be set up for Michael Dorn's Star Trek he's been talking about for years? I guess we'll have to wait for Scotty to beam us up before we get those answers. This is exciting times for Star Trek and Mr. Alex Kurtzman, we are anxiously awaiting for you to make it so. So what do you guys think? Do you think that's too many Star Trek series coming out at you one time? You can never have enough Star Trek series. No? You think this will make you pay for CBS Access now? Probably not. But. No. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I would. I, I think I might. I, I'm going to have to see more. It wasn't enough to pay for it just to get Discovery, you know, just for the one show. But now that there's more, and especially if, you know, 
we get to see like previews of it or something like that if it looks pretty good i mean all of those sound interesting to me so if it's all good then yeah as long as it's just, i went and i got hulu just because they were doing 11 22 63 that's right and thank god hulu actually turned out to be good because 11 22 63 not so, so good. good no you not so much <laughs> no so yeah i'm a little gun shy on that one but uh yeah, well, well it's, it's supposed to be only like five dollars, so I, I I might give it a try if I don't care for it. I'll just that's true. Ditch it. You know, we've had a deficit of Star Trek, so I don't mind going in the extreme opposite direction. And you know, I just hope they do a good job. Yeah, exactly. Hope he's a man for the job. Exactly, but yeah. all I know is, welcome back, Jean Luc Picard. Woo-hoo! Fuck yeah! Oh yeah! You're my captain, buddy. <laughs> All right, well, on that note, Vito, why don't you tell us uh, what you got going on in the news? Well, I was very fortunate to have gone to Flashback Weekend, a horror convention here in Chicago last weekend, and I was privy to some information that you may not be privy to. So let's check it out. So Charles Band, the owner of Full Moon Features, debuted a teaser trailer for the long-awaited Primeval's movie from the stop-motion animator legend David Allen at this year's Flashback Weekend Horror Convention in Chicago. Primeval's has been in the works for decades, but was unfortunately abandoned when David Allen lost his battle with cancer in 1999. The live-action segments and most of the stop-motion effects were finished before his death, and now Charles has assembled a team led by David's protege, Chris Endicott, to finish the film. Fans of David's work will be happy to know that the film looks amazing, even in its unfinished version. You may know Alan's effects from movies such as Laser Blast, the Puppet Master series, The Howling, Batteries Not Included, and Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, to name a few. Primeval is set to be released sometime in 2019. For all you found footage fans out there, you'll be happy to know that the sequel to 2015's Hell House LLC will be released this year. Hell House LLC 2, The Abaddon Hotel, from writer-director Stephen Cognetti, is the follow-up to the critically acclaimed Hell House LLC. One of the best found footage horror movies to come out will hopefully get some more backstory added to it with the upcoming sequel. The trailer that was just released shows an investigative team entering the abandoned Abaddon Hotel to find some clues about the tragedy that took place during the Haunted House attraction's opening night. The first film relied on practical effects, sound design, and creepy atmosphere to bring its scares to the audience. This sequel appears to ramp up the tension while still keeping the formula that worked so well for the original. Another highlight at this year's Flashback Weekend was the reunion of the cast and director of the original Child's Play movie, one of my favorite horror movies. Yeah, so there you have it. I am quite excited about this full moon feature thing coming out, man. I love stop motion photography, and I love full moon pictures. And And found footage horror. I was just going to say, found footage right up your alley. Gotta love it, guys. Yeah, you sure. you definitely were a happy camper coming out of that oh, yeah. convention uh, with all that news. And you also got to meet Tom Holland. Yes, who was super excited that I asked him about the Langoliers. He who just knew? he kept talking about it, and I did not stop him at all. Of course it was, you did. It was, yeah, it was awesome. You, you loved every oh, second yeah. of it. It was the highlight of the weekend for me. Tom Holland, you are an incredibly generous person. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Good dude. We like him happy. Yeah. <laughs> all right so on that note i think that about wraps us all up yep another one is on the books folks so thank you for joining us here at geeking poetic news as always we appreciate all your comments your support your likes your shares subscribing and your comments we need your comments we need your feedback so definitely let us know what you think good or bad we want to hear it And uh, we will be seeing you again uh, pretty soon. We'll have more news for you. There's always geeky stuff coming out. So we'll be back with you soon. Well, mama, what, what, what?